yes, there's another Howard, and he kindly sent me a Spectrum 48K with the rubber keyboard. Here's a quick recap on where we got with the ZX Spectrum repair in the last episode. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, happy days. But sadly, nothing. A few of these have been replaced before. And guess what? Bing bong. There was a knock at the door. <laughs> and the postie showed up with this. And I've got to be honest, looking at this PCB, looking at all the bodging, all the modding that's had to happen to this early PCB to get it up to speed. I've been slaving away over a hot soldering iron uh, for quite literally, I would say, days trying to get all of the old memory chips off this PCB. And some of them can be really, really troublesome. But I think I've found a uh, I think I found a reasonable way of doing it. What happens is the the pads, uh, if they're thicker pads, they wick the heat away, and the solder on the top of this PCB, on the top of the wire on the plate on the on the plated through hole PCB. The solder there just doesn't melt. And therefore, the pin stays soldered. And it's a nightmare because then you, when you pull the chip off, you sort of like rip pads up. And I don't care about this, this PCB anymore. It's not about this PCB. So what I've done is I've taken a knife and I've cut all of the tracks, the thicker tracks to the chips. And that has made removing these memory chips so much easier. And I'm not gonna say I'm flying through them, but I'm making faster progress than I was before. Still loads and loads and loads of work to do. I don't know how many days worth of work I've already put into this. But slowly and surely, we're getting there. I tell you, <laughs> look at the state of my desk. Hang on. Look at all, look at all that. That's just all bits of old solder from the solder sucker. And then... Here's the old PCB. And look at this. Here's the new PCB. We've really made some good progress. So uh, it's nice to see that starting to look a bit more populated. Okay, nice, cool, relaxing drink in the sunshine, I think is required. So I've been trying to do this ZX Spectrum repair on a bit of a budget. I didn't want to buy lots of new components so I've been trying to make use of all of the components that are on the existing PCB and effectively transfer them over to the new version 3 PCB. And at the same time, I thought, well, that's a good opportunity to go ahead and do a couple of little live streams on Twitch. We got some lovely people pop up and offer moral support and a little bit of guidance in the chat. And uh, as you can see, we're making some reasonable progress on this PCB. I'm aware that there are some faulty memory chips that we need to get sorted as well. But the good news is, is I do have a tester for that. So hopefully we can identify which chips are faulty going forwards and buy some replacements. You might wonder why I haven't published another video on this recently, but ultimately it's the amount of time and effort that goes into doing this. It's just incredible. The good news is, is we've made some really good progress and actually most of the silicon is done now and quite a lot of the hardware is done. So we're starting to get to a point where it's a case of just fitting all the passive components. There are some differences between the 
passive components that are on the issue 3 PCB versus the issue 2 PCB. The issue 2 PCB being the green PCB and the issue 3 PCB being the nice white PCB that you can see that I'm working on populating at the moment. So going forwards we've got some work to do to understand which components go where and what the differences are on those PCBs. Let me show you what the PCB looks like today with most of the silicon in place and most of the hardware in place. So here we are then, the PCB at its current state in all of its glory. And actually I'm really quite impressed with this. I'm actually quite impressed with my soldering jobs on the back of it here as well. So hopefully you can see that I've done a pretty good job of making sure there's no dry joints and it's all using leaded solder because unleaded solder, whoops, because unleaded solder is absolutely horrid. So what have we got then? We've got the modulator, which is actually bypassed completely at the moment. Uh, I'm just using it for the output jack on it, which is a phono style jack, which hopefully you can see on the back there. And that's set up so that it's just running composite directly. Then we've got the headphone socket and the microphone socket for the cassette deck. We've got both the crystals on the, on the PCB here. Um, we've got the ULA chip in place, all socketed. We've got some of the logic in place here as well. Uh, we've got the Z80 and we've got the ROM in place as well. Everything's been nicely socketed. We've got the upper RAM here. And we've got the lower RAM down in this corner. We've even got a speaker on the board and we've got the two keyboard ribbon cable connectors in place as well. We've started making some progress on the power supply up here. So basically then now we've got to fit all of the capacitors and resistors, all of the passive components on this PCB. We need to figure out which resistors and which capacitors go where. As I mentioned before, there's a bit of a difference between where those passive components go on the new issue 3 PCB versus this here old issue 2 PCB. It's incredible really when you look at it, the amount of bodge cables and wires and stuff like that that was shoved on this issue 2 PCB in order to make it work. Anyway, good news, we've made some really good progress and I'm hoping the next time I publish a video on this, you're gonna end up with a working ZX Spectrum. And the plan is <laughs> to turn this new Spectrum PCB into a laptop style ZX Spectrum. All right, folks, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend. Don't forget, give us a good old thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers and beers, folks. Bye for now.